There we go. Good evening. Welcome to the Township of Abington's Board of Commissioners meeting for Thursday, April 13th. And may we have a roll call, please? Commissioner Sipin? Here. Spiegelman? Here. Sanchez? Here. Hoffman? Here. Myers? Here. Martin? Shriver? Here. Bowman? Here. DePlacido? Here. Barron? Here. Gillespie? Here. Hecker? Here. Kalinowski? Here. 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 Uh, please note Commissioner Michael Markman is excused. Would everyone please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic which stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. At this time, I'd like to call on Township Treasurer Jay Blumenthal for a presentation. Thank you, President Luker. I'm going to ask Rudy Stroh, Chuck Marsh, and Dan Buckley Sr. to stand up with me. And uh, Chuck Marsh is going to give uh, a little talk about Helping Hand. Good evening, President Luker, Vice President Klein, members of the commissioners, uh, Township staff and guests. My name is Chuck Marsh and I'm the Vice President of the Helping Hand Foundation, a private nonprofit organization based here in Abington. I'm here with some of the current members of the board, President Dan Buckley, Secretary Rudy Stroh, and Treasurer Jay Blumenthal. Other current members of the Helping Hand Foundation include President Luker, Deputy Chief Pat Malloy, former Commissioner Bill Lynott, and Chancellor Emerita of Penn State Abington, Karen Sandler. It is our pleasure this evening to present checks to two very worthy organizations in the township, Abington CAPT, Citizens and Police Together, and the Abington Police PAL, uh, the Police Athletic League. Before we do so, I'd like to say just a few words about the Helping Hand Foundation. Since its founding 22 years ago, the Helping Hand Foundation has worked to raise funds and cut through red tape to provide quick financial assistance to countless individuals in the form of rent, utilities, food, clothing, home repairs, medications, and medical bills. In 1992, the founding members, then President Bill Inot, Vice President Dick Marsh, Treasurer Tom Normoyle, Secretary Rudy Stroh, and myself, wanted to find a way to meet the needs of struggling senior citizens throughout southeastern Montgomery County. Over the years, our focus turned exclusively to Abington Township residents and expanded to include all needy citizens, regardless of age. And our work has been a success thanks in large measure to the referrals we received from our partners in this work, and they are our elected officials, the Abington Police Department, Houses of Worship here in the township, the hospital and social services agencies. And so we extend our thanks to those of you in the room tonight who represent those valuable partnerships. Thank you for your, your efforts and your partnership with us. And now, after more than two decades of service to the community, we have decided to fold the Helping Hand Foundation and cease our operations. The checks we're presenting tonight represent the remaining balance of the foundation and we are confident these two organizations will manage these funds well as they continue the important work of serving our young people and needy citizens throughout Abington Township. So I thank the commissioners for allowing us to mark this occasion here before the entire board and these citizens. And on behalf of all the board members of the Helping Hand Foundation, both past and present, it has been our honor to serve the Abington community. Thank you. And now I think we're ready to present those checks. Now you see why I stick to say that speech because he did it better than I could have done it. Uh, first of all, I want to call Steve Kalinowski down. He is the president of CAP and present him with a check for $40,000.
One thing I want to say is I've spoken with Steve about this. We want this to be put into a needy family assistance fund, if possible, uh, for the CAP to continue our work. And now I call upon uh, Peggy Myers and John Livergood to accept for PAL. Peggy, another forty thousand yeah. dollars. I, I just want to share with everyone how much this means to PAL. I'm going to speak for Steve Kalinowski. Um, I'm sure it means equally as much to CAPT. But for our Abington Police Athletic League, this means a tremendous amount of programming because our children do not pay for anything. So this is going to go to the children, the youth of Abington Township. On behalf of the police department, I would just like to echo Commissioner Myers' <clears throat> remarks. This is an extremely important program. Uh, we know what an impact it makes and how it helps us deter youth crime. So we're very appreciative of this money. It will be a tremendous help to PAL. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chuck, and all the gentlemen from Helping Hand. Thank you. At this time, I'd like to call on Chief John Livingood for presentations. Thank you, President Luker. This, this evening, we're going to swear in three of the Abington's newest police officers. First of all, Adrian D'Angelo. Let me tell you a little bit about Adrian. Adrian, you want to step forward? Resides in Abington. He attended Highland Elementary, Abington Junior High School, and is a 2012 graduate of Abington Senior High School. He completed an internship with the Abington Police Department in June 2014. He received a Bachelor of Arts degree in Criminal Justice and Sociology in May 2016 from Bloomsburg University. Adrian is a recent graduate of the Temple University Police Academy. Adrian D'Angelo. <coughs> Adrian, if you would just turn around and turn and stand in front of the podium there, and I'm going to call Nico Bellardo up. Nico Bellardo was born and raised in Columbus, New Jersey. Nico received a Bachelor of Science degree in Criminal Justice with a minor in Business from Gwinnett Mercy University, 2015. While attending Gwinnett Mercy, he was a member of the National Criminal Justice Honor Society, as well as a four-year student athlete on the men's lacrosse team. He is a recent graduate of Philadelphia Police Academy, where he was the highest ranking cadet in his class. Ladies and gentlemen, Nico Bellardo. Christopher Petrus. Christopher resides in Ambler. He's a 2012 graduate of Upper Dublin High School. He received an Associate of Arts degree in Liberal Studies from the Montgomery County Community College in 2014 and Bachelor of Arts degree in Criminal Justice in May of 2016 from Temple University. Christopher rolled in and was a recent graduate of the Temple University Police Academy. Christopher Petrus.
I would now call on Judge Kessler to do the swearing in. Gentlemen, you want to come up and turn around? <coughs> All right, officers, if you could please repeat after me. After I say I, please state your name. I. Nico Bellardo. Christopher Petrus. Adrian D'Angelo. Do you solemnly swear? Do you solemnly swear? That I will support, obey, and defend. That I will support, obey, and defend. The Constitution and the laws. The Constitution and the laws. Of the United States. Of the United States. The Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. The Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. And the Township of Abington. And the Township of Abington. And that I will faithfully discharge with fidelity. That I will faithfully discharge with fidelity. The duties of my office. The duties of my office. As an officer for Abington Township. As an officer for Abington Township. And will obey the rules and regulations. And will obey the rules and regulations. Policies and procedures. Policies and procedures. Governing all sworn members of the Abington Township Police Department. Governing all sworn members of the Abington Township Police Department. Congratulations, officers. Adrian, I'll start with you. Will you introduce your family, please? I'm here with my mother, my father, my sister, my brother. I'm here with my girlfriend, Colleen, and her family, the Browns, which are seated over here. <laughs> Nico, introduce your family. I'm here with my girlfriend, my girlfriend's grandparents, my girlfriend's parents, my girlfriend's brother, my grandmother, and my aunt and my uncle. And Chris, introduce yours. I'm here with my mother and father, uh, my grandparents, my two sisters, my girlfriend Kira, and her friends as well. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> okay, gentlemen, you can exit the room. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Chief Living Good, and thank you to the new police officers and their families. We'll take a uh, slight recess, Nathan, for about two minutes. This time we'll reconvene with our meeting. At this time, I'd like to call on Commissioner Ben Sanchez for a proclamation. Thank you, Mr. President. We have a proclamation regarding Arbor Day observance in Abington Township. Whereas the trees and other natural resources of Abington Township are fundamental elements in the vitality of our community, and whereas the urban forest of Abington Township provides us with immeasurable environmental human health economic, educational, family, and social benefits, and whereas in the month of April, an annual celebration of Arbor Day is held in Abington Township as part of the national observance and as a project of our Shade Tree Commission and our Environmental Advisory Council, and whereas all of the people of Abington are invited to participate in our 2017 celebration in tree planting at Memorial Island, Abington, PA, on April 22nd, beginning at 9 o'clock a.m. And Memorial Island is located off the Spur Road, Old York Road, at approximately 1001 Old York Road. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Abington Township Board of Commissioners that April 22nd, 2017, is designated Arbor Day. The Board issues this proclamation calling upon the people of Abington Township to observe the day by joining our celebration and by continuing to enhance the environment by planting trees in our community. 
approved this 13th day of April 2017 by the Abington Township Board of Commissioners signed by Wayne C. Luker, President, and Michael Lefevre, Secretary. Thank you, Commissioner Ben Sanchez. <clears throat> At this time, we'll move to our next agenda item, and I'd like to call on Vice President Stephen Klein for approval of the minutes. I'd like to make a motion to approve the meeting minutes for the Board of Commissioners meeting of March 9th, 2017, and I so move. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any comments or questions from commissioners or staff? If there are none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Next in our agenda is an appointment of Ms. Valerie Odell Ward to serve as an alternate member of the Civil Service Commission through December 31st, 2020, and I so move. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any comments from commissioners or staff? Uh, Commissioner Farron. Thank you, President Luker. Just quick some back end, excuse me, background information on this appointment. I don't happen to know Ms. Ward offhand, or Mrs. Ward. Okay, she's a constituent of mine. Did you get a copy of her resume? I didn't, no, that's what I, I must have missed that. I apologize. Okay, um, uh, I can vouch for Ms. Uh, Valerie Ward. Uh, I think Commissioner Peggy Myers can also. She's on, and Commissioner Kalinowski, she's involved with PAL, okay. and CAP, and a, a, a host of uh, community events okay. and organizations. So uh, there's, uh, I can forward, uh, send this one down to you. And my apologies for the oversight on that. I'm sorry, go ahead, Commissioner Schreiber. Commissioner Farron, also she's been being added as an alternate member. Right. So I, I didn't know if you had seen that, that instead of a, so when somebody's absent that she'll go. No, ahead. sure, yeah, I just wasn't, I just happened to miss this, so I apologize for missing it. Um, I don't have any reason to object. I was just curious about some no, of the information. Not a problem. I think most of the board members know her, so I think this is a, a no-brainer, so. Great. Thank you. Um, with President, that, uh, may, I'm sorry, Commissioner Myers, I, to, go ahead. I, I think it's uh, very important to say that Ms. Ward has been a very strong supporter of the township, of the police department, and probably there's no one else in this township that has more volunteer hours than Ms. Ward, and she volunteers every Friday and Saturday night at PAL <coughs> to register the children into the system. Sure. Great, thank you. <clears throat> this verify that comment. I don't know how she does it, but every Friday and Saturday night, she's at PAL from start to finish for years. So um, I applaud her efforts for everything she does. And um, did I get a second on that motion? Yes. Okay. Uh, any other questions? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion passes. Next, we have appointments to the Human Relations Commission, and we have three, a motion to appoint John Korn as a member of the Human Relations Commission for a three-year term expiring December 31st, 2019. Second. Well, Sorry. Okay, I'm going to Sorry. ask for one motion for all three. Pardon me. If that's okay. Is that okay, Council? <laughs> yes, it okay. certainly is. A motion to appoint Amy Gold McDonald, also for the Human Relations Commission, for a two year term expiring on December 31st, yes. 2018. And lastly, Rosemary Jenkins to fill the unexpired term through December 31st, 2017. So if we're uh, within proper uh, pr protocol, I'd like to make one motion to appoint all three candidates as listed on the agenda, and I so move. Second. We move to second it. Any comments from commissioners? Commissioner Klein. So the, these, uh, these candidates were interviewed, I believe, by the Human Relations Commission? Uh, and correct. These, these are right. basically passed on recommendations? Correct. Okay. My understanding, I think there were nine uh, <coughs> candidates um, that they uh, interviewed and selected these three, so with that, we'll take their recommendation and uh, I did get a second, so all, any other questions from commissioners? Any from staff? If there are none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The motion passes. Congratulations to John, Amy, and Rosemary. At this time, I'm going to open the floor for nominations for the appointment of the township manager. Uh, at this time, I'll open the floor for any nominations. Commissioner Klein. I'd like to make a motion to hire Richard J. Manfredi as township manager for Abington Township. Specific terms of Mr. Manfredi's employment shall be negotiated with the President and Vice President of the Board of Commissioners in consultation with the Township Solicitor to be presented to the Board of Commissioners for consideration at a later date. And I so move. Second. So moved and seconded. Okay. Uh, I'll open the floor for any other nominations. Okay, if there are none, uh, we'll take a vote on Richard Manfredi. Uh, can we have a roll call vote, please? Yes. Did he no. Mr. Spiegelman? Yes. Commissioner Yes. Commissioner Ruffman? Yes. Commissioner Myers? 
I, I will be abstaining from this vote. <clears throat> Commissioner Myers, you're not permitted to abstain. You can only abstain when there's a conflict of interest. If you have a pecuniary interest in the vote that is being taken, you can abstain. Otherwise, you're required by law to vote yes or no. Okay, then, then, my, then my vote is no. Commissioner Schreiber, can I ask a question? I, I missed the, the, um, my window, or can I nominate somebody else? Or is that too late to do that? Um, well, uh, I think there was a, we're, we're taking we a vote it? right now. Okay. Um, In that case, I, I will vote yes. Commissioner Bowman? Yes. Commissioner Duplicito? Yes. Commissioner Farron? No. Commissioner Gosby? Well, you, I was going to abstain but just because I don't, um, they were all nice people, but I don't feel that, um, I just don't want to settle. So I guess my vote is no. Commissioner Yes. Commissioner Kalinowski? The same no. Commissioner Klein? Yes. Commissioner Luker? Yes. Okay. Uh, so uh, with that, uh, Mr. Richard Manfredi will, uh, is appointed to the position of Township Manager of Abington Township. Uh, are there any other comments on that issue? If not, I'll open the floor for public comment on agenda items only. <coughs> agenda items only. Yes. Laura Lehman, 1431 Bryant Lane. I don't know, but that just seemed bizarre to me that that was on the agenda. But is that how we accept a township manager? We don't have, uh, I mean, we actually have people nominating people. Uh, I mean, we haven't, has everybody seen all the, all of the bios and everything? And Everybody's had time to make nominations and so on. It yes. seems it seems like it was must be sudden if we don't seem to have any alternatives, but we have so many people dissatisfied. No, this was uh, decided. This was decided over the last couple of months, and we've met and in executive session, and this is a, a personnel matter, so we did not have to s discuss this publicly. Yeah, so. I understand you don't have to discuss it publicly, but normally I would think that you would be pretty much in, a, in agreement and uh, people wouldn't at the last minute be wanting <coughs> to nominate people. Or so, um, so I'll just make that comment that I think that agenda item was uh, strange from this side of the podium. A manager is a, a, an extremely important part of this team that does this stuff. The manager's salary I mentioned to you before, does this manager also, he signed a con he hasn't signed a contract yet, correct? Sorry. So, the, so may I beseech you not to have what we apparently had in the old contract, which was he sets his own hours and um, can come and go as he pleases, that's um, not in the interest of the public in, unless it's documented and we can see exactly what's being done. So um, I, I would hope that that is, uh, I, I did not know this was uh, coming up, so I was not ready with the rest of the information from Manager Lefevre's salary. The other thing I wanted to say is the, the Jenkintown lights that the, uh, that the Public Works Department is doing. That's been another issue. I have had residents call me and tell me they've seen paving trucks here, they've seen uh, trash trucks there in other townships. I don't think it's a good idea for Abington to pay staff and then for that staff to be hired out elsewhere. Um, especially when in other meetings I hear that there are things that need to be done that we maybe don't have enough staff to do. So maybe, um, you know, that, that actually is a concern to me. I don't think we should be paying for personnel that are then getting hired out somewhere else. That's really an affront to the budget and everything else, the process that we go through. Um, I, I don't like that at all. The Old York Road lease, I'd like to mention, that's coming up tonight. 
Um, I did suggest to you that, that you not extend the current uh, uses that are not very friendly to the entire Abington community for such a long time. Uh, I was very sad that you did it anyhow, but um, I sincerely would ask that before you extend this lease, which you did in the last meeting, you have another chance here to wait and see if this Abington Arts Center actually makes enough money to support that whole biz building or other uses that support that building can be made uh, such that they are available, you know, something interesting to everybody. Okay, and I again would like to protest that we cannot talk about these things as the agenda items come up. Okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you for your comments. Any other comments from the public? Okay, hearing none, we'll close the public comment portion of our agenda and move right into Public Works, and I'd like to call on Commissioner Tom Hecker. Thank you. Thank you, President Luker. Uh, the Public Works Committee has three <coughs> items of business this evening. The first is PW1, and this is a motion to adopt resolution number 17-012, approving Abington Township to submit an application to Montgomery County for the Montgo 2040 Implementation Grant Program. The grant submission will support sidewalk and crosswalks along Washington Lane, and I so move. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any comments from commissioners? Any from staff? There are none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The motion passes. Thank you. PW2, and this is a motion to authorize a transfer of $20,000 from the 2017 Sump Pump Connections Expense Account Number 07-07-566-7516 to the 2017 Stream Maintenance Expense Account Number 07-07 dash 566 dash 7514 and I so move. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any comments from commissioners? Any from staff? There are none. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion passes. And PW3, and this is a motion to have the proper officials enter into an intermunicipal agreement for maintenance of traffic signals <coughs> and street lights located in Jenkintown Borough and I so move. Second. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any comments from commissioners, staff? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion passes. Thank you, President Luker. That concludes the business of the Public Works Committee. Thank you, Commissioner Hecker. At this time, I'd like to call on Commissioner Ben Sanchez, Director of Code Enforcement Land Development. Thank you, Mr. President. Tonight, we have CE1, Subdivision and Land Development, LD 1606, Stephen Kozlowski, 1235 Minel Road. This is a motion to approve the subdivision and land development application of Stephen Kozlowski, applicant for the property located at 1235 Minel Road, Abington Township. The applicant proposes to subdivide the existing property of 3.52 acres in size into six parcels. The proposed new properties will be served by a new cul-de-sac style roadway. The proposed properties range in size from 15,900 square feet to 29,180 square feet in lot area. The proposed new single-family dwellings will be served by public water, sanitary sewer, gas, and electric. Each of the proposed new parcels will contain on-site rain gardens as well as a public stormwater management system that is plotted to be located below the proposed new roadway. The properties are zoned in the R2 residential district in Ward Number 2 of the Township of Abington. The motion subject to conditions and waivers as listed in the agenda, and I so move. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any comments from commissioners? Any comments from staff? If there are none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The motion passes. Next, we have CE2. This is a public hearing, ordinance number 2131, chapter 162, zoning, article 3, establishment of zoning districts related to the medical marijuana dispensary and medical marijuana grow facility. And I'll turn it back to you, Mr. President, to open the hearing. Thank you, Commissioner Sanchez. At this time, I'd like to open the public hearing on ordinance number 2131. I'd like to call on Solicitor Michael Clark. Thank you, President Luker. Um, this uh, ordinance that you have in front of you has been duly advertised. Uh, as you are aware, uh, the Pennsylvania General Assembly, Assembly uh, passed the Medical Marijuana Act, Act uh, 16 of 2016. 
the legislation was to allow two different types of uses for medical marijuana, uh, dispensary and grower processor. Uh, the program, the Medical Marijuana Act, will offer medical marijuana to patients who are residents of Pennsylvania and under a physician's care for the treatment of a serious medical condition as de defined by Act 16. The legislation gave the Department of Health the direction to develop rules and regulations to implement the legislation, and the Department of Health has done that, and they have provided some guidance on uh, zoning issues for local municipalities. Uh, the Department of Health uh, will begin uh, issuing licenses, or may have already begun issuing licenses, in 2017 with the expected full implementation in uh, 2018. And as we have discussed at previous meetings, uh, the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania has been uh, d divided into six regions, and Montgomery County is part of Region 1, which also includes Philadelphia, Bucks County, Chester County, Delaware County, Lancaster County, and Schuylkill Counties. Uh, and there will be a limited number of each of the different types of licenses available for each of the regions. The Abington Code currently has no provision for this use. Uh, because this use was not legal in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania until the passage of Act uh, 16 of uh, the Medical Marijuana Act. The proposed ordinance allows dispensaries by right in the town commercial, special commercial, planned business, and mixed-use districts subject to the requirements set forth in the ordinance. It would also allow uh, grower processors by conditional use in the suburban industrial district subject to the requirements uh, set forth in the ordinance and subject to the very uh, stringent requirements uh, regarding uh, security uh, that are being uh, developed or have already been developed by the Department of Health. Uh, the proposed ordinance implements uh, parking requirements related to the two um, uses. Uh, as we've mentioned before, there are uh, two considerations for the board as they are reviewing this ordinance this evening. Uh, the first is now with the amendment that we made at our last month meeting, uh, the proposed ordinance is consistent with and permitted uh, by the Medical Marijuana Act. Secondly, and most importantly, as has been raised by some of the board members, uh, the legislature has made it clear that a municipality may not prohibit such uses outright but must make accommodations to permit uses provided the regulations do not conflict with the Act. Uh, many municipalities have looked at this and questioned whether or not they could craft uh, ordinances that would act either as uh, uh, an outright ban or a de facto ban on uh, the use of medical marijuana in a municipality, and the legislature has been very clear that it, this has to be a permitted use inside um, uh, your or any municipality. Okay. Is that it, sir? That's it. Okay. Uh, we've heard from the solicitor. Are there any comments from commissioners? Yeah. Commissioner uh, Farron and then Hecker. Thank you, uh, President Luker. Just a, um, a question that just struck me now, so I apologize for not bringing this up earlier. Theoretically, that you can't have, if and I'm looking at um, this, uh, Section 4, Chapter 162, Article 7. Use regulations, section 706.C. Um, below there, in parentheses A, under use C37, it says that the medical marijuana dispensary may not operate on the same site as a facility used for growing and processing, um, growing and processing, basically. But theoretically, if we had two permits, could, could two competing businesses be next to each other in the same zoning area? kind of like a McDonald's and a Burger King next to each other? Um, the, this is uh, part of the regulations that are coming from the state. And uh, when they use the word lot, they are speaking about a particular uh, piece of property. Right. So they, you cannot operate on the same lot. But if, you, if they were to uh, uh, issue licenses for two businesses that were on lots right next to each other, and in every way, uh, every other way, if they were able to comply with the state law and comply with our regulations, we haven't seen anything that would prohibit that. They just can't operate on the same lot. I would say this, though, because of the regulations for the grower processors, um, there, there, 
basically in, in different types of areas, and there, there are different lot sizes that are needed. So it might not be that, that practical, but yes, it could happen on adjoining lots. Theoretically. Okay, great. And then the next question is into the next Section 5, Chapter 162, Article 7, Use Regulations, Section 706D, underneath Use D18, H, where it says there shall be no emission of dust, fumes, vapors, or odors which can be seen, smelled, or otherwise perceived from beyond the lot line for the property. Uh, just curious, we have some, some issues with some other industries in our ward. Uh, if this was going to be addressed, is that something that we would have residents bring to our attention first or go to the Department of Health first or the Department of Environmental Protection? Kind of just as an, an immediate response, what would the best suggestion be? The, um, the I would advise that if one of these facilities is located in the township and a resident feels that dust, fumes, vapors, or odors are coming from that, reporting it to the township would, uh, would be their first step. But actually the enforcement of this, even though it's in our ordinance, the enforcement of this, we would immediately re refer this over to the Department of Health. Because when we've looked at some of the regulations that the Department of Health has produced with respect to what these grow processors must do with regards to security and all of these other issues, right. this is one of the uh, very significant aspects of it. And the rules and the regulations are, are pretty uh, well defined and uh, pretty stringent. So while a resident I don't know if we'd want to say go bring it to the Department of Health. If they brought it to us, we would be contacting the Department of Health. Great. Thank you. Okay. Commissioner Hecker. Thank you, President Luker. Uh, Solicitor Clark, back to Section 4. Um, this is Item F, and this is the section dealing with this, the disposal plans that will be reviewed and approved by the township. I uh, just wanted to double check. Are the criteria by which the township would evaluate any disposal plan included in the language in Act 16? It's not included in the language of Act 16. It's included in the rules and regulations that the Department of Health has developed. Okay. So the, 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 the legislation itself is, believe it or not, is relatively bare bones. Interesting. It's the regulations from the Department but of the, Health. But there are much. state criteria upon which we would evaluate the acceptance of any proposed disposal yes. plan. Okay. Thank you. And if I can move. Okay. Uh, call on Commissioner's opponent, then Commissioner. Fine. Mike, how many townships are on board with this already? Um, I, 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 Commissioner Zappone, I don't know if I've, I've kept track, but uh, pretty much everyone you see in the, in the local area is beginning to pass these. I know that there are a couple who are discussing not passing it and see what, seeing what happens, uh, but most municipalities are passing it now because I think what most municipalities are realizing is they don't want to get caught in a situation where they're not regulating it at all, so they're not having any, any say on where it goes, and they'd rather not have the Department of Health tell them where it's going to go, or a court tell them where it's going to go. Thanks, Mike. Okay. Well, Commissioner Kalinowski. So, Michael, to bounce off that question, we, <clears throat> um, we should pass this ordinance tonight to regulate where uh, it can be dispensed and grown, correct? Yes. Yes. Okay. okay. Any other comments from commissioners? Commissioner Myers. Thank you. Um, in two different sections, it, it deals with the dispensary and it deals with the grower processor um, about submitting a security plan to the township. Can, can we add in at this point that to be reviewed by the police department? Because it, other than the health department, it doesn't really say who's reviewing that security. Um, can I interject? Sure. Peggy, I don't, I'm sorry, I don't mean to interrupt, but your community police department is who reviews our security plans when they come in. This would go up to Roger for him to look at. I mean, in, in years past, it's had different names at a crime prevention officer. But when I have issues with 24-hour operations, Roger assists me or to, in doing the security review of that. So it is reviewed just as a policy of staff. Right. Well, you know something? That's what I love about this job after 20 years. You learn something new every day. Thank you, Mark. Yep. Okay. Any other comments or questions from commissioners? So, real quick again, right. should, should that be written in the ordinance or no? If, if you wanted to add it, I don't think it would be a substantial change. I think you, you could put that in there if you wanted to. I mean, I understand what Mark's saying. I, I'm just. I, 
you know, as we go forward and questions come up on different things, um, I've, I've known or learned that different ordinances say different things and um, they don't quite follow through with what should have been written or what should have been said. So that's, I guess, Peggy Myers' question there would be. That's right. I, again, I, as Mark just said, it, yeah. it, it doesn't, it's probably not a, a problem if you want to add that language. I, I would respectfully submit that when we say township, mm -hmm. we mean everyone connected to the township. Uh, I don't think this was meant to exclude the police department. Uh, so, right. if, but if you wanted to say the township and the township police department, I, it's not a substantial amendment. It won't require re-advertising, okay. and it's belt and suspenders. It can't hurt. Okay. Just, just to add, just to add on, Commissioner Kalinowski, and you're absolutely correct. Um, even though it is policy, and obviously been policy for a long time, uh, policy can change. We've certainly seen that. So I, th I think, Commissioner Kalinowski, thank you. I think that it should be written in. Okay, would we have to uh, change anything procedurally or? No, I, I think it's, again, it's not a substantial enough amendment that would require re-advertising. Did, did we have a motion and a second on this? Yes. Oh, whoever made the motion and uh, the second would just need to accept Commissioner Myers' uh, amendment. And the motion was made by? Would we do that? Would we do that in the public hearing or after the public uh, hearing? Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. okay. I, I was getting some bad intel. <laughs> there wasn't. There wasn't a motion and a second. So when the motion is made, it should just be. It should just be added. And within the public hearing or after the public hearing? When, when the motion is made. When okay. you, at so the end of the, the after you close the public after hearing. The public hearing. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Right. Are there any other comments from commissioners? <clears throat> any comments from the public? No comments from the public? Okay. Uh, I'm sorry. Yes, sir. There was an issue last month uh, dealing with adult daycare versus child daycare. Was that corrected on the advertisement? It was. Yeah. Okay. At this point, I'd like to make a motion to close the hearing. Okay. And the motion reads as follows, motion to adopt ordinance number 2131, amending chapter 162 zoning, article three, establishment of zoning districts related to the medical marijuana dispensary and medical marijuana group facility, and I so move. Second. Been moved and seconded, any comments? I think now we need Commissioner Kalinowski's amendment. Yeah, that's somebody needs to make the amendment. We gotta do the motion first, and that's something. Motion to make the amendment that the police are security. Is worded. You want that chapter? What sections are they? Um, um, section that? four, item J, um, for the medical marijuana dispensary. You'd be adding in review by Abington Police Department, and then uh, section five, item K, for the grow facility. You'd be adding in the same language. Motion to make those changes. Second. Second. Okay. okay, so uh, we have an amendment to the original motion, so we'll vote on the amendment first. Um, you, you can do it that way if you if you choose, okay. yes. And that is kind of the standard way we do things here, so yes. Okay. And so, just before we do that, just to okay. clarify for, so this is not a substantial change, doesn't require re-advertising. No. Okay. No. okay, great. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The motion passes. Okay, now we have to... That would be it. Now we vote on the, that uh, the, the amendment. That, that was vote on just the amendment. Now it's to vote on the on the ordinance as amended. Okay. Now we'll uh, motion to vote on the motion as amended. Second. 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 It's been moved and seconded. Any comments from commissioners or staff? If there are none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That motion passes. Okay. And at that point, I'll turn it back to you, Commissioner Sanchez. Thank you, Mr. President. That concludes the business of the Code Enforcement and Land Development Committee for this evening. Thank you, I believe. I'm sorry, Commissioner Klein. Yeah, there'll be, I uh, just wanted to add one thing. There'll be a, uh, the next hearing on the zoning ordinance, the draft zoning ordinance, uh, which is revision 2017, will be on Monday, April 27th at 7 o'clock in this room. Thank you. Okay. Thank you.
At this time, I'd like to call on Commissioner Lori Shriver, Director of the Public Safety Committee. Thank you, President Luker. I'm sorry, we excuse me. Ma'am, you have a question? Yeah, there, there was a, a session in the very beginning, I guess, for public comment on agenda items. That's when Mrs. Lehman spoke, and Mr. Kozlowski's application was on the agenda, so that would have been the time for you to speak. So my question to the solicitor. Um, it was already voted on. Uh, now, I guess the question is, would she be allowed to ask? Do you have a question or a comment? or? Well, they, they missed that window of opportunity, technically. Well, just speak for no, 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 the, no, 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 no. You're out of order. Yeah. You're out of order. Years we've been working Ms. on Ms. helping residents. Ms. Lehman, be, would you please be quiet? I'm asking the solicitor how we can do this procedurally. I'm asking, can we do that? I didn't ask you. I asked the solicitor. Please be quiet. Thank you. Um, President Lugar, our procedure is that um, uh, public comment on all agenda items is taken at the beginning of the meeting. Uh, we have properly followed that procedure this evening. Uh, the agenda item was presented, it was voted on, and it was approved. Um, so the if the there's no way to go back and sort of undo the vote because of, of somebody uh, wanting to make a public comment. We do provide for a, um, a general public comment at the end of uh, the meeting and that would be the appropriate time at in, in, in this instance for those individuals to make their comments. Okay. So did you understand that, Mayor? We'll, we'll, get, we'll afford you an opportunity at the end of our formal agenda. Okay, and I'll make a, a comment at that time and motion you to come up to the platform, okay? okay. Thank you. Uh, okay, back to Commissioner Lori Shriver, Director of Public Safety. Thank you, President Luker. We have two agenda items. PS1 is a motion to adopt ordinance number 2137, amending chapter 156, vehicles and traffic, article three, parking regulations, section 25, parking prohibited at all times, no parking between signs, no parking here to corner, Parking prohibited except certain hours, no stopping or standing, and I so move. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any comments from commissioners? Any comments from staff? If there are none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion passes. PS2 is a motion to advertise ordinance number 2138, amending chapter 156, vehicles and traffic, Article 2, Traffic Regulations, Section 14, Stop Intersections, and Article 3, Parking Regulations, Section 25, <coughs> Parking Prohibited Except Certain Hours, No Stopping or Standing, for adoption at the regularly scheduled meeting of the Board of Commissioners on May 11, 2017, at 7.30 p.m., and I so move. Second. second. It's been moved and seconded. Comments from commissioners? Comments from staff? If there are none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion passes. And that concludes our, our agenda this evening. Thank you, Commissioner Schreiber. At this time, I'd like to call on Commissioner John Spiegelman, Director of Public Affairs. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, tonight, Public Affairs has a rather robust eight-item agenda. And here is the first item. PA1, uh, this is a motion to accept the lowest responsible bidder and enter into a contract with the LJ Paolella Co uh, Construction Incorporated in the amount of $1,545,571 to construct a new community facility at Crestmont Park, and I so move. Second. It's been moved to second. It. Comments from commissioners? Comments from staff? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The motion passes. <clears throat> Item PA2 is a motion to authorize the use of funds from BB&T account number 139-0000-740-639 in the amount of $119,027.62 as of January 1st, 2017, to fund the construction of, an, of the new community facility at Crestmont Park. The account was established on August 31st, 1990 for affordable housing purposes that has been replaced by funding from HUD and DCED, and I so move. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Comments from commissioners? Yes, I think it was uh, January 31st, not 1st. So you have a question with the date? Yeah. Okay. Did I say January 1st? Yes. Corrected. So, so corrected. My apologies. Okay, thank you. Any co other comments from commissioners? Staff? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. 
Opposed? The motion passes. I'm going to be more articulate on this one. Uh, PA3 is a motion to accept mm. the Transportation Alternatives <laughs> Program, TAP grant, from the Pennsylvania Department of Transportation in the amount of $450,000. The grant will support the construction costs for phase one of the bicycle plan, and I so move. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Comments from commissioners? Comments from staff? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion passes. Item PA4 is a motion to accept the Department of Conservation and Natural Resources, the DCNR, grant in the amount of $90,000. The grant will support the design and engineering of expenses to implement phase one of the bicycle plan, and I so move. Second. We move to second it. Comments from commissioners? Comments from staff? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The motion passes. PA5 is a motion to accept the proposal from the team of Simone Collins Landscape Architecture to prepare, to prepare the construction documents through the Transportation Alternatives Program grant for the Abington Trail Project at a cost not to exceed $65,348, and I so move. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any comments from commissioners? Any from staff? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The motion passes. Item PA6 is a motion to approve a lease addendum effective December 1st, 2017, extending the Old York Road Historical Society lease at Alverthorpe Manor 10 additional years and increasing the total leased area by 927 square feet. The <coughs> annual rent obligation, including utilities, will inc increase to $15,183.36 effective December 1st, 2017, and I so move. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Comments from commissioners? Any from staff? There are none. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion passes. Item PA7 is a motion to advertise the bid for the condenser replacement project at the Abington Library, and I so move. Second. So we move to second it. Any comments from the commissioners? Any comments from any staff? There are none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The motion passes. Finally, item PA8 is a motion to adopt resolution number 17-013, authorizing the disposition of certain human resources records as set forth in Exhibit A, and I so move. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any comments from commissioners or staff? There are none. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion passes. And Mr. President, after noting that I got all the number, the, uh, the, the dollar amounts right, and those were really hard, uh, that concludes uh, the public affairs agenda. Thank you, Commissioner time. Spiegelman. Commissioner Vice President Klein, Director of Finance Committee. Thank you, President Luker. I'd like to call on Jay Blumenthal for the Treasurer's Report and wanted to make sure that, did you need me to help you do the math? I dropped off my business privilege tax yesterday to add that in. Anything you want. <laughs> I know you did. Thank you, Commissioner Klein, and I do hope I get the numbers correct. <laughs> As for the monies deposited into Republic Bank for the month of March from the various township depart departments, we deposited a total of twelve million two three two two five. Excuse me. Whoa! You almost got me. Twelve million two three two five two zero compared to last year of thirteen million oh three four five seven one with a decrease of 802051. Might I add, uh, there's a line item in there that we collected $137,951 from a business tax law that we've been working on for around a year or so, and uh, that's extra money. Year to date, we deposited 17489162 compared to last year of 19080 one two zero with a decrease year to date of one million five nine zero nine five eight. As for the real estate taxes brought in in the month of March, which is our second month of collections, we brought in eight million two one eight zero five four. Year to date eight million nine one six zero four zero with a balance to collect for the year of eighteen million one nine three seven five five. If we compare to March to last year, we have a decrease of 748490 and those are my reports. Thank you. Thank you, Treasurer Blumenthal. FC1, investments, motion to approve investments for the month of February as previously circulated to the board. It was noted that investments for the month totaled $150,000. Interest rates yields was 1.05% and I so move. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any comments from commissioners? Any comments from staff? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes.
FC2, motion to A, approve the February expenditures as previously circulated to the board in the amount of $1,757,658.29 in salaries and wages in the amount of $1,874,223.13. And B, authorize the proper officials to sign vouchers in payment of bills and contracts as they mature through the month of May 2017. And I so move. Second. We move and second it. May I have a roll call, please? <coughs> Yes. Francis. Yes. Yes. Meyer. Yes. Schreiber. Yes. Thurman. Yes. Nicolosito. Yes. Barron. Yes. Gillespie. Yes. Hecker. Yes. Kalinowski. Yes. Klein. Yes. Cooper. Yes. FC3, motion to approve the advance and travel expense activity for February 2017 as previously circulated to the board. Advance and travel expense reports were $0 and $1,839.23, respectively. Two month expense expenses total $3,011.29. And I so move. Second. We move to second. Any comments from commissioners? Any from staff? None. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The motion passes. FC4, a motion to approve the clearing fund, the deferred revenue expense activity, and petty cash balances for the month of February as previously circulated to the board. Clearing fund receipts and disbursements for the month of February 2017 was $712.06 and $108.81, respectively. Deferred revenue expense receipts and disbursements for the month of February 2017 were $1,500 and $9,970, respectively, and I so move. Second. So move to second it. Any comments from commissioners? Any from staff? If there are none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The motion passes. And that concludes the Finance Committee's agenda. Okay. Thank you, Vice President Klein. At this time, we're going to have public comment on non-agenda items. So based on the solicitor's comment, ma'am, could you come up to the podium? State your name and address for the record, please. Keep in mind now that the item has already been voted on, so, but we can hear your comments. Jacqueline and John Myers, 552 Hoyt Road, Huntington Valley. Um, we are here once again, as we have been throughout the process since we learned that this property was going to be developed to share our deep and pressing concerns about the building of six properties that will substantially and considerably take away the uh, soaking up of rainwater. Uh, we're here to remind all of you that in the storm of September 8th of 1996, our property at 552 Hoyt Road was declared a federal disaster by FEMA. In that storm, we had a flash flood from which we had to literally pull two of our children, Chinese children, out of the basement where they would have drowned if we weren't right there. We sustained uh, upward of four feet of water around the property. Outside is just untold how high that got. When neighbors looked on, it looked like it was a river. Um, we are considerably below where this is going to be built. We look way up at it. And uh, we are just very concerned that this rain garden situation and whatever uh, you know, other you know, disposal of stormwater is not going to be sufficient to protect our property. We are the only property that lies that low in all of Huntington Valley and took on all of the water of June Meadows. No one else flooded in that storm. It was quite a, a, an unbelievable event. So. What I was here to do was ask you to physically come and see where our house is situated in relation to these extensive homes that are going to be built and to deeply consider the potential of flooding that could possibly go above our roof now, now that this uh, kind of development is taking place right behind us. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, this, this item was thoroughly discussed at the uh, committee uh, hearing, so I don't want to open up for debate, but you mentioned that there were other residents who wanted to comment on it? I, I don't know if they want to comment, but I know they are here. Okay, uh, feel free to come up um, to the podium, state your name and address for the record, and we keep in mind we have about a three minute, we have a three minute time speaking. Yes, thank you for your time. Uh, Mike McLaren. Come closer to the microphone, please. Thank my name's you. Mike McLaren, 1234 Oliver Road. My uh, property is adjacent back to the uh, property that they're speaking of. Um, since the last meeting, we found out that there's actually problems with the sewer system. I've been in contact with the Mr. Wrigley back and forth about uh, 
having to come on my property now that they have to dig it up and uh, flush upstream because of a potential clog in the line. Uh, the property on 1235 Minor, where they're going to build, has a, a storm drain that they cannot locate. So now they want to dig up my property and shoot a camera, I guess, up and try to find where the manhole is located on 1235 Minor. And I just like to, uh, before they start any kind of construction, please have this taken care of before any potential flooding problems can occur. Thank you. Thank you. Again, uh, having said that we've already voted on this item, uh, Mr. Wrigley, could you and Mike Powers make, uh, this is in Commissioner Michael Markman's word, correct? Okay, he's on vacation right now, but when he comes back, could you um, bring him up to date? Because those comments I didn't hear at the uh, committee meeting. Yeah, he's, I've already informed him of it. Okay, so you're aware of the comments the gentleman just made? Yeah, okay. we've been back and forth in the last couple of days working on it. Okay, and Michael, Commissioner Markman is aware of it also? Yes. Okay, thank you. Any other comments? Sir? Ms. Lehman, hold on, please. Thank you. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm Nate Sugarman. I, I live next door uh, to 1235. I'm at 1245. The rain garden concept sounds, it sounded, it sounds good because I've been listening to it at every meeting. The problem is, from what I've been able to gather, this rain garden, it's like not all the downspouts dump into the collector pipe that shoots it into the retention basin. It shoots it into a rain garden, which is supposed to have a special composition of filtering material, and then the water goes into this drainage pipe. My concern is, is that <clears throat> on a low-grade storm, it may very well work as intended. But on a heavy deluge rainstorm, it may be overwhelmed because the water can't get through the two feet of whatever this special soil or dirt that they've got to get to the drainage pipe. My question is, is if it doesn't work on the heavy rainstorms, is the township going to be stuck because they've accepted the design? Will a builder be stuck because he installed it? Will the engineer be stuck because they designed it? Or will the homeowner be stuck because they bought the property with it, with, with it on, their, you know, on their system? I just want to know, if the system works great, hey, you know, we're, we're in paradise. But if it doesn't work, who's going to be on the hook to make it right? That's all I'm asking. Okay. Thank you for your comments. Can I? Again, we can't comment on that right now, but I think uh, all your comments were duly noted by our engineering and our Can we comment? wastewater treatment. Uh, yes, sure. Uh, I don't see why. Uh, let me just make sure. Okay. All right, Commissioner Gillespie. I'm, right. I, I'm just concerned because I didn't hear um, what we just heard, that Mr. Wrigley had a situation going on over there. We didn't hear that before. At the committee level? Uh, at the yeah, committee meeting? we didn't yeah. hear that any, and we didn't, even before the vote. Just concerned. <laughs> and? <laughs> it's, it's, it's not really a situation, it's just access to the manhole. The manhole's buried. I, I, I understand that, I don't have to uh -huh. cover it so we can get in and do our cleaning. No, that's, it's not holding anything up, it's not hurting anything, it's just. We have to get in and get access to it to do our flushing and do the maintenance on the lines. Okay, just so it doesn't. So if I'm if I'm understanding, you're you're hearing stuff that tonight that you didn't hear at the council. Okay. All right. Any other comments? Okay. Any other residents want to speak on that agenda item? Okay. All your comments were duly noted by staff, and I'm sure they'll communicate that to uh, Commissioner Markman when he returns. Okay, uh, next, name and address for the record, please. So Laura Lehman, 1431 Bryant Lane. And on that particular issue, by the way, last time uh, Mr. Powers said something about uh, they were collecting for 10 years and they weren't sure what they were going to do after that. I have a good idea. Collect for every year. Every year you put aside, you have five or 10 years in the kitty first, and then you collect immediately so you don't get 10 years down the road and you don't know what to do. That doesn't make any sense. I have 15 different things that I need to comment on. How many? I have 15. And I have 15? three. Yes. I, I'm trying to tell you three minutes is not adequate. I just spent eight, day, uh, or eight hours today in a courtroom 
watching what's going on in this township. So I do spend far more hours than most residents, and this does not fit in three minutes. So I will go down these very quickly, and I will do this when there is a question that I have that I would like an answer to. Okay, so and I would I like to have this answers. When your three minutes are. Yes. Okay. Well, and and I would appreciate some leeway. The, these rules we've been trying for 11 years to establish, and Commissioner, you never keep the rules. Mr. Spiegelman last time was trying to explain why you let somebody go long. Ms. You Freeman, only let him. Why don't you get started on the 15 items? So. We yeah, can... I know, but but this is important. For 11 years, we've been trying to get speaking could rules you, determined in here, and it's still the same problem. So, number one, the zoning rewrites that Commissioner Klein promised everybody would know and understand before they got them. I don't even understand on my own property. And Commissioner Sanchez said, you can't make a list. Of course you can make a list. You put as much as you can in the list, and then people know as much as they can about the change. Susquehanna Town Center, yesterday or uh, two days ago, we were coming in. I said, well, let me turn in there and see what the space looks like. It was uh, a couple of days. It was Friday, actually, so it was almost a week ago. A woman was trying to come out. I'm trying to go in. There's cars going both ways coming in from around the light. It's incredibly dangerous. She was telling me to go. I couldn't get in. She was blocking the road. We had a complete bollocks the first time that I tried to turn there. The parking lot, once I got in, was full. I cannot understand you're trying to say that you're building a town center there. So that's, that's the, the comment there. How do we not have a nominee for one of the most important jobs in our township introduced to the public and an opportunity to meet him and to comment, to bring comments Many people may know this person, especially as he has a prior history. And how do we not have an opportunity to comment before you vote on something that important? Uh, I'm not saying you're required by law to do it. I'm saying we want to be part of our government. That's the most important part. The, the uh, colonnade today. Uh, was in the courtroom I don't along think, with. I don't, wait, hold on, please. Yes. Counsel, I don't think this is something that could be coming. I, I, I think if she wants to okay, comment, I don't think we're going to say anything, but if she wants to comment. Okay. So Thank we you. had four lawyers there and two staff members all day long, okay? And the, the only thing that I'll comment on today is that they put a few brief things into the, into the record uh, with the transcript, and then it all went behind closed doors. And whatever they did or didn't work out, I left finally be right before 5 o'clock. Whatever they did or didn't work out was all done behind closed doors. This is problematic. There should be a long transcript record of the things that are or are not done on that property. And if something happens, this well, township Hammond, needs that to rely on. That's in the court. That's not even at the township level. So go ahead to the next Yes, item. that's happening in this township and being decided by our solicitor. Okay, and it affects all of us because <coughs> our liability is at stake. I have said to our manager who told me he had one foot out the door, that we have a code enforcement department that enforced not one code in dozens and dozens and dozens of incidents. That needs to be a concern. Not one person got back to me, and my manager said, well, I've got one foot out the door. Okay? This is not acceptable in this township. These are people's lives. You talked about the trees and the quality of life. How about living next to a house with the plastic flapping? Okay, and for years, for years, and nothing in the file. Um, the vacant uh, property conservatory, uh, the cons conservatorship uh, is again something that I am concerned about. I need to know where to address it. I can't seem to get it addressed openly. Uh, so perhaps Commissioner Spiegelman will answer that one for me, okay? The roadside spraying, I did have some people say they were going to help me work on that. It's going to happen soon. Last year we had brown roads all up and down, pesticides in our streams all the way up and down both sides of the state roads. Who will work with me to get that changed? We don't want to have it again. And the solicitors, I would like to have an answer as to why they are not required to wear 
their permits around their neck. It's a simple solution for a major problem. And the same thing I, I asked about the no more robo, I would like to have an answer from Chief Livingood. I, I think I deserve an answer from Chief Livingood after what he wrote me, which was needing some adjustment. Okay, and uh, the last thing that I would like an answer for is the little cottages uh, in the, um, in the zoning rewrites, when you don't have your parents with you anymore to live in them, and you don't have children at home because they've all gone off to, cottage, to college, what's going to happen to these cottages then? To me, they look just like an attempt to split the properties and make more. Thank you. Very good. And you were allowed six minutes, and you did a good job. You got it all in. Thank you. Any other comments from the public? or non-agenda items. If there are none, we'll close the hearing and start with comments from, I'm sorry? Oh, comments. Com yeah. comments from the commissioners, yes. I'll start with Commissioner Bowman. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Just a note that on uh, Saturday, April 22nd, there will be a designer bag bingo at the Roslyn Boys Club building to support the uh, Roslyn, uh, second annual Roslyn Fun Day. And uh, we urge people to come out on April 22nd for designer bag bingo. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner DiPosito. Thank you, President Luca. I just want to wish everyone a happy Easter. And as always, when driving through Abington Township, please drive like your kids live here. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Commissioner Farron. Thank you, President Luca. I just want to extend um, thanks to a lot of the men and women sitting up here. They've been very helpful with a couple of my residents in the past um, past few weeks and months. Um, Ed Michelow, uh, Jay Blumenthal, Mr. Wrigley, Mr. Powers, very much appreciated. Um, two comments about what's going on in the ward first, and, and I'll let Cl Commissioner Gillespie talk about the Keep the Parade Running 5K. It was a cold race day, but it was a phenomenal race day, and I am especially proud to say and, and let people know that my son Thomas won his age group. Uh, 10 and under, and he is faster at 10 than I have ever been in my life. Um, it, it's very impressive to watch him run, and I'm very the proud. <laughs> the gap is only going to widen. It's, it's going to be sadder and sadder when we try to run together. But it's, it's, it's very proud as a father to see him be um, enjoying a sport and being so successful at it. And then finally, I want to spend, uh, send a thank you out to a couple of our residents who are spearheading a cleanup of Hallowell Park. Frank McCann, who is uh, one of our great residents, a volunteer firefighter, so thank you to the fire department. Um, reached out to me, reached out to um, Andy uh, Oles, our Director of Parks and Recreation, and Andrea Sue, who is another resident who was on the um, Environmental Action Committee. Um, we're going to have a cleanup at Hallowell Park on Sunday, April 30th, from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m., rain or shine, uh, there will be games. They'll be meeting on the north side of the park at Glenwood Avenue. There will be an EAC table set up. They will have all the materials people will need, gloves, shovels, they'll have food and snacks, and they will be giving a Go Green rewards card, which we saw at last week's presentation, for everybody who comes out as a, an additional thank you. Um, please, if you are interested in going, you can reach out to me, or you can reach out to the Environmental Action uh, Committee and let them know that you will be showing up. Council, excuse me, I keep saying committee, council, so you, they know how many people to prepare for. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Farron. Commissioner Gillespie. Okay, thanks, Tom, for mentioning the run. The run was uh, fantastic to keep the parade running, the 4th of July uh, Greater Glenside Patriotic Association. We had uh, over 200 people participate, and we did very well. And I think they had fun, and we had commissioners uh, that are sitting up here that were there and uh, that did support us also. And I also want to congratulate the new young um, officers and particularly Adrian D'Angelo, because uh, he was a wrestler on my son's wrestling team, and I'm looking at him now, I'm like, he's gonna be a police officer. Uh, so it's kind of, it's really exciting. So congratulations to them. And thank you all for all that you do for us. Thank you. Commissioner Hecker. Thank you, President Luker. I only have 37 items I'd like to review this evening. <laughs> Just kidding. 36. <laughs> Three. So first I wanted to uh, thank Larry Mateo for helping me organize last weekend's community meeting with uh, residents on Horace Avenue. We have a zoning application coming forward for the potential of a new Italian deli uh, opening uh, on Horace Avenue. And there are a number of concerns expressed by the residents that we are working through related to traffic and parking and other considerations, but it's an interesting concept. 
And uh, the idea is being spearheaded by two sisters who actually grew up around the corner on Eckerd Avenue. And uh, I think we're looking, looking to return to the days of yore. So we'll see how that plays out on the 19th. But it was a good discussion, and I thank Mr. Mateo. I um, want to remind folks that on April 22nd, uh, Saturday, April 22nd, uh, the Shade Tree Commission will be sponsoring the Township's annual Arbor Day celebration. Um, that's always a good time, 9 to 12 p.m., and more details on their Facebook page. And finally, Happy Easter. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Kalinowski. So uh, I don't want to say this, but I have to say this. I want to welcome Mr. Manfredi as our new township manager. I didn't want to oppose Mr. Manfredi. I think I, what I want to do is oppose the, the, um, how, it, how it all happened. And that's as far as I'm going to go with that. Um, the 24-hour uh, relay is coming up. If anybody would like to volunteer, um, please contact Ms. Val Ward or a Dave Rondinelli at Community Policing. Uh, for the last three years, I've received the um, Obama bronze, from President Obama, the bronze award for volunteering. And a lot of my volunteer work is done through CAP. So, and to receive the money we received tonight was, was a great honor. Um, that'll go into many of, to help us with many of our programs. But um, I'd like to thank Jay Blumenthal, you know, We've worked together over the years through Helping Hand and what we call in our program the Needy Foundation. Um, so we'll work together. We'll build a stronger community. Um, but seriously, if anybody is interested in uh, volunteering, it's the weekend before Memorial Day. Um, so you, what you have to do is just contact community policing, Dave Rondinelli, or if you know Val Ward, she is uh, the leader of all our adult volunteers. And um, it's a great program. Thank you. Happy Easter. Thank you, sir. Vice President Klein. Thank you, President Luker. I just wanted to make one correction. The uh, zoning ordinance meeting uh, is on Thursday, April 27th, not Monday, April 27th. Um, and I wanted to thank Drew for bringing that to my attention. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Commissioner Zappone. Just a couple comments. Uh, first of all, in response to what was being said about the code department, the code department has handled many violations of my ward. And the staff there has followed up on each of those violations and kept me posted. We're going through a couple right now. I just want to applaud the code department for handling those issues right away. Also, uh, to the Abington residents, the second alarm is fun drive. We'll be getting underway shortly. Please open up your hearts and your wallets and help the second alarm is out. They're always there where we need them. Uh, also, the third annual RZ Family Committee Designer Bag Bingo will take place this Friday night. Uh, let me retract that, not this Friday night. Next Friday night, the 21st, at the North Penn VFW, and the doors will open at 6. And on May 13th at the VFW will be our fourth annual um, Oldies Night. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Commissioner Spiegelman. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. President. Um, I want to extend uh, congratulations to uh, Bob Greaves, uh, who is a member of the Vacant Property Review Board and is now, uh, we now voted him in as the new chair of the Vacant Property Review Board. Um, he'll be taking over as of the May meeting, and so he's uh, uh, a, lot of, a lot of confidence in him. Um, so congratulations to Bob. Uh, also, of course, congratulations to our three new officers, uh, Officer Bellardo, Officer Petras, and in particular, uh, Officer D'Angelo. Uh, he and his family, they are a wonderful family, and they are part of the Ward 11 family. Uh, they are great folks. And finally, to everyone who uh, uh, this week is uh, celebrating the high holidays of the Jewish or Christian faiths, uh, happy holidays to all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Sanchez. Thank you, Mr. President. I think Commissioner Hecker made mention of this, but just wanted to remind everyone, in case it was lost in my proclamation, that the, uh, <laughs> the Arbor Day will occur on April 22nd. That is contrary to what the township calendar says, because the trees came in a little bit early. So the Arbor Day celebration, April 22nd, beginning at 9 a.m., ending around noon, when we get all the trees planted. And we're going to take a break about uh, 10.30 a.m. so that we can raise the Tree City USA flag flag, formerly recognizing Abington Township's dedication to Arbor Day and our 10th year as a Tree City USA. So that's Saturday, April 22nd. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Commissioner Rothman. Thank you, President Luker. A um, <clears throat> few events I want to make note of. Uh, Alverthorpe is having a flea market uh, that will be held on April 29th, beginning at 8 a.m., $15 per table. 
Um, the rain date would be uh, April 30th. Uh, if you have any questions about that, uh, let me know. Um, also, uh, as to there's been multiple mentions of Earth Day and Arbor Day events, uh, I would recommend everybody take a look at the uh, township website and uh, check out the events that might be going on in your neighborhoods uh, for uh, on the Environmental Advisory Council's Facebook and on the uh, township website. I'd like to invite the community to a special event that one of my residents is involved in. Uh, it is the inaugur inaugural Philadelphia Black Fine Art Show, uh, Saturday, May 6th, and uh, Sunday, May 7th, uh, beginning at 11 a.m. at 315 York Road. Uh, I've seen some of the samples of the art. It's uh, some really special stuff. Please come out. I hope to see you there. And I'd like to wish everybody a happy Easter or happy Passover. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Myers. Thank you. Uh, there was made mention tonight of the manager's hours and that the hours are not stated in the contract. I think it's important to tell everyone that although it, the hours may not be mentioned in the contract, certainly the manager, the manager before this manager, has had a schedule, has kept to the schedule, and in most cases works much more than the schedule at no point, at no time is anyone coming or going as they please. Uh, I'd also like to thank Helping Hand on behalf of PAL. This is a sig huge, significant contribution. Helping Hand has done a wonderful job over the years, and I'm sure that CAPT and PAL will continue that tradition. Thank you. Commissioner Schreiber. No comment this evening. Uh, and lastly, I'd like to thank Helping Hand for the donations they made to CAP and PAL. Very much appreciate it. Uh, congratulations to the new three police officers. And my personal thanks and congratulations to Ms. Val Ward on her appointment as an alternate to the Civil Service Commission. She's, uh, um, as you can see from her, her resume, Commissioner Farron, she's more than qualified for a lot of things. And lastly, a speedy recovery to Roger Myers, husband of Commissioner Peggy Myers. And lastly, I want to thank my fellow commissioners for a good meeting tonight. With that, I'll say good night and thank you to all and thank you for attending. Andy.